Just yesterday, I decided to walk out to my porch to just get a little bit of air and uh, just relax. And I didn't want to tell all that to my family, so I just turned and said, I will be right back. And Eleanor, my six-year-old, without missing a beat, finished it. And it just broke my heart because I said, I will be right back. And then Eleanor said, with more of the Pope on film after this. Do, 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 do. And it, it, it meant so much to me to yes. hear her do, to, to hear her take me to break. <laughs> I, I loved it so much. Yes. Uh, okay. It's time, Bunny. See, you're super high. Right now, yes, I am. I, I am not. So this is really? going to work out. Yeah, no, not at all. Oh, uh, this so this is going to work out great. It's time, bunny. It's time. Yes, it is. <clears throat> yes, bunny, my friend. It is once again time for all of us here at the Pope on Film to whip and or nay nay our way into the third and final part of our big shoe. Really big shoe. And it is said third shoe, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our main event. So, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, and gender rebels, I feel yes. that they should also be included. Inclusive in this podcast. Oh, let's get ready to count some yo's as we continue our summer of yo with the 1985 film Rocky Iv. It's really one word, so Rocky Iv. Rocky Iv. Bunny, quick question. Yeah. Lightning round. Does this film represent the eventual crumbling of the USSR, or is it just United States propaganda? And discuss. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to go with U.S. propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this film? What do you think about this film? What does this film do to you? Oh, it is so... Formulaic. It is like you take the elements from Rocky Three out, plug in these other elements, and it's this movie. Yeah, the way that I see it it's now, now that I'm older, this movie came out and I was a bit young. The way that I see this film now is, this movie is dumb and stupid and idiotic and I fucking love it <laughs> so much it's really bad in a wonderful way as opposed to Rocky <laughs> 5 which is really bad in a bad way but this one it's fun it's campy it's Rocky at its campiest and I like it we are so far removed from Oscar award-winning best oh, picture no. drama. So freaking far from an Oscar winner. But it's just dumb, stupid American propaganda, and I fucking love it. <laughs> I want a Rocky Horror Picture Show this movie. Really? I love this movie. I absolutely love this movie. It's dumb. It's stupid. I feel for we, Rocky IV, Rocky is the same way some... I'm just saying. Hmm? 
we could set up a movie we night. Should... Oh. Oh. I look at Rocky Four the same way that other people watch that movie Showgirls with yeah. Elizabeth Berkeley. That it, I know this movie sucks, and I love it. I absolutely love it. It's just dumb and stupid and fun. Yeah. And I really, I really nailed it. I didn't even write it in the podcast notes that I have here. It just came out extemporaneously while we were uh, talking in the last episode. Rocky movies are Godzilla movies. Yes. At their most basic, because you're watching this Rocky film and you're like, oh, this Rocky movie, okay. And I'm watching it, and I'm not watching it for the drama. I'm not watching it for the romance. Not watching it for the kids. Not watching it for this and that. I'm watching it for the fights and only for the fights. And even if the rest of the movie sucks, if you film a good fight, you fucking got me. And with Rocky Four, like, oh, this is stupid. Oh, this is dumb. Oh, no, it's time for the driving montage. And then, like, five montages in rapid succession after that. But once that fight starts, it's like, fuck, I hate how much I love this. <laughs> I hate how into this I am. I hate how edge of the seat I feel. Like, you you got me, and I hate that. But, but always keep in mind... Real fights were never like this. Yeah. Put your this fists is... up. Block punches. That's what easy. Well, block, see, okay. your, block his hits, but Balboa. See, it gets you involved. It gets you involved. And he doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. It gets you involved. And that's all that matters. Yeah. It's a choreographed, yeah. edited show. And they do it really pretty well in the Rocky movies. They do it wonderfully, and I love it. I didn't so, like how stiff uh, Dolph Lundgren was. Yeah. You know? He had that whole kind of robotic feel to him. Yeah. The Punisher. Yes. He will forever be my Punisher. <laughs> forever be my Punisher. And uh, Nick, uh, Samuel L. Jackson is great. I still have a small place in my heart for David Hasselhoff. Yeah. As Nick Fury. I still have a place for him in here. So for this episode, to do something different, I watched the director's cut... I did not watch the original theatrical release of Rocky Iv. I watched the director's cut. It was released in 2021. It played in select theaters for one night only. It's called Rocky for Rocky versus Drago, which is wildly shittier than just calling it Rocky for the director's cut. It's right there. And I don't yeah. know why they didn't use it. But whatever. The theatrical cut of Rocky IV has a 38% on Rotten Tomatoes. It won five Razzies that year. Whereas the 2021 director's cut has an astounding 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. It is shocking the difference between 38% and 80%. Yeah. That is a shocking number. So I was really interested to look into having seen Rocky if the the theatrical release a million times in my childhood, my teenage years. I was interested to see the director's cut and for the first time and to see what the differences were. If I had to summarize the director's cut of Rocky if Rocky versus Drago, it would be this. It's 2020. It is lockdown, and Sylvester Stallone is home alone in his giant mansion, re-watching the Rocky movies. He gets to Rocky for and oh, who has a prominent part in the movie? It's Brigitte Nielsen, yeah. who I was married to for two years until I divorced because uh, it was 
the worst time of my life. I yeah. hate seeing this woman have such a prominent part of this film. Gee, if only there was some way that I could get rid of her. Yeah. I know how I can get rid of her. I... By making a director's cut. <laughs> So, Stallone married Bridget Nielsen in 1985. They divorced two years later. So, as far as I can tell, during the lockdown, uh, Rocky IV director Sylvester Stallone edited out most of Nielsen's lines, replacing them with deleted scenes and a elongated previously on Rocky. Yeah. Uh, I like the director's cut more than the original. It, it has more heart. It has more characters plus it edits out the ridiculous sound effects for the hits because like every time that ivan drago hits rocky it's like the sound of a car running into a giant slab of meat yeah. in the theatrical version but if you really pay attention they edit out those sounds and have more realistic sounds in Rocky IV, so that's fascinating. So, so it, it Rocky for the director's cut just seems more serious, but they cut out some things that I'm pissed off about. Like... Number one, number one, there's no church's fried chicken jingle anymore on the TV. That's playing by the pool while Apollo Creed is playing with his dog. Number one. Okay. Number two. Uh, when Polly is listening to a Walkman in the shack, which is totally in Russia and not anywhere else, we'll get to that. He's no longer listening to the Chipmunks Christmas classic. Christmas, Christmas time is here. Okay. And finally, finally, the worst part of the uh, of the director's cut. I. I almost stopped watching the film for this reason. I consider this to almost be an unforgivable crime. In Rocky IV, the director's cut, Holly doesn't have a birthday party, and you never see the cheesy 80s robot! <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, what the fuck? That's a reference to a skit from season three of I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robbins and <laughs> Easy 80s Robot is the best part of Rocky Four. Happy birthday, Polly. And he's coming in, he's wheeling in. Yeah. I am so upset that they cut out Cheesy 80s Robot, the best character in Rocky Four. Yes. So here's a little bit more about the robot. Agree. Sylvester Stallone had... And he barely had time to begin with. Hmm? And he barely had any screen time to begin with. Yeah. And uh, that robot was the first transgender actress in the Rocky franchise. Because when the robot shows up to Paulie for his birthday, at his birthday party, it's a creepy robotic male voice okay. happy birthday Polly and Polly's like I hate this this is horrible but the next time you see the robot oh it has a beautiful female voice and now it's a girl and Polly's in love with the robot trans oh, actress robot really? this is the first I, trans I robot that, to I, ever star in a boxing movie I, I, I... Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I find this movie completely forgettable because it is so formulaic. It is. You know? It is. It's really stupid. It but the robot really short. But yeah, yeah, overall, yeah. But the robot had a point. I looked it up. I looked up the history of the cheesy '80s robot from Rocky. Is. So yeah. Vester Stallone had a son. The son was autistic, and Stallone was trying to connect with a child and find some way for the child to come out of its shell and he his shell 
and he was doing everything that he could. And so finally, he bought that actual giant fucking robot okay. for his autistic kid. And the robot helped the kid and helped him come out of his shell and became a friend to the kid. And that's why Stallone put cheesy 80s robots so prominently in the theatrical release for Rocky IV. Interesting. That's kind of an awesome, sweet story. Yes, it is. Bunny, did you ever see the 2011 film The Muppets? Uh, the original Muppets? Yes, not in the No, one. the one from 2011. Oh. Starring Jason Segel. No. Okay. When one. they finally... When they finally find, uh... Uh, Kermit the Frog, he hasn't been seen in public for a long time, and he's secluded in his giant mansion, and when they talk to him, uh, this robot appears, and it's called 80s Robot, and that's his uh, butler. Okay. He, and uh, I am 80s Robot. Would anyone like a tab or a new coat? No, 80s Robot! <laughs> Why don't you go away, 80s Robot? Oh, this is totally bummer, man. Okay, thank you, 80s robot. <laughs> it's it's 100% a call to Rocky. Ew. And I love it. Nice. Oh, it's 80s robot. There is a two-minute cut on YouTube, of, a, and it's called The Muppets, but it's just 80s robot. And so it's a two-minute long video, and it's just the movie The Muppets, but only the bits with 80s robot in it. So there's a big 80s robot fan base. Yeah. Uh, also, really quick, do you, what do you think the chances are that James Brown, before he died, remembered that he filmed this movie? Ooh, not good. Not good. You know, I <laughs> think... I think I don't mean to make fun of the dead, but if you really take a good close look, that man has the most glassy, emotionless expression on his face while he's performing in this film. I feel good! Yeah, that's what cocaine will do to you. <laughs> but I think they get him... I think they're like, fuck, he needs the money. They get him cleaned up, they get him jacked up yep. however they have to. And they get him to ready to perform. They push him out there. He doesn't know. Yep, not at all. There is no way he knows what's going on in this film. Period. Uh -huh. Period. I think it's funny. Uh, a, oh, and another thing, Bunny. Um, one thing that that really affected me when I saw this film. In the in in our current political climate in the year of our Lord twenty twenty three, yeah, it's crazy to see this film in our current political climate because this film is set in Ronald Reagan's eighties, and so every American, yeah. every American in that James Brown scene is united in cheering for a black man against a tall, white, Russian person. This yeah. would not happen now. No. Because all of the Republicans and racists would be cheering for the bad guys. Yeah. Hello, true. we are Russian. All of us are bad guys. Everyone, bad guys. We are all snidely whiplash. Even the woman. She is a female snidely whiplash. We are all bad guys. Wah -ha -ha. Uh, the thing here are two things that I hate about Rocky Four. Number, uh, so Apollo dies in the ring. Yeah. First off, oh Rocky, you you aren't was. Responsible for Apollo's death? I feel like I am. I feel like I am responsible for him dying. No, you're not, Rock. You're not responsible for him dying. 
You kind of fucking are, Rock. Yeah. You yeah. kind of fucking are. Because if you had just gotten that towel that was glued to your hand and just threw it in the ring, they would stop the fight, and your friend would be fucking alive. Yeah. So it is kind of you. It is what it is. You are kind of responsible. Yeah. Yeah. But also, what upsets me is See, I, was, I hate I was how much more into, I was much more into. Okay, this is the speech. This is the speech that comes at this point in the movie, and it's going to be some sort of a conflict or something like that. And like, how much does the subtext matter? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because again, it's, but like, yeah. this, it's a different shade of the same formula. Yeah. Another thing that upsets me with Rocky is, is I hate how Apollo dies. Yeah. He's killed in the ring. By Ivan Drago. He dies by Drago's hands, but somehow everyone goes, gee, what a shame. If only there was one person that we could blame or charge with a crime, but fiddle dee dee. Yeah. La la la. And it's like, dude, he killed someone. Period. And everyone's like, oh. Hey, Rocky, you shouldn't fight him. It's like, yeah, you should. He's a fucking murderer. Is no one going to do anything about this? <laughs> a man was murdered in front of James Brown. <laughs> and no one is doing anything about it. You can't charge this man with a crime. It's not like every Russian person can come to America, kill one American, and get away with it. <laughs> Every Russian gets one American to kill. Have fun. Like, that's not how it works. There are laws, which apparently, like, it. no one cares that Apollo was murdered. Yeah. That's never brought up in the entire film. And, it, like, what the fuck? You know? That's always upset me. Bonnie, I got a question for you. Yes. There are four characters that appear in the first six original Rocky films. Can you name these four characters? Wait a second. Say that again, please. In Rocky, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky 5, and the sixth film, Rocky Balboa, four characters, four Rocky characters uh, appear in all of those films. A lie. Can you name the four characters? Wow. You should at least get one right, because it is kind of in the name. Uh, of the well, film. I know, I know. Tell you, sure. I mean, are we going as far as four all the way? Because I know Kelly Shaw is... No, from one to six, only four actors appear in all six of those films. Can you name those, the characters? So, one's a given, and that's the... I would say Rocky. Uh, I would say... Uh, Apollo Creed. Do we include flashbacks? We do not include flashbacks. So you can't pick Mickey and you can't pick Apollo. So I can't pick Apollo. No. Because he doesn't appear as an actor in five or six. He's not an actor playing himself. No. Playing the character. Uh, you know what I mean. 
So you got one, Rocky. Well, I think Talia Shire makes it into the hood. She in does five. make it into the hood, but oh, she boy. is dead when uh, Rocky Balboa begins. Is Polly dead so, yet? I forget. Polly is the second one. He is in all six films. Talia Shire is dead in the last one, but Polly is somehow still alive. So Rocky and Polly, they are in all four. There are two other people who have been in the other uh, films. Can you name them? Wow. Rocky and Talia Shire and Polly. Nope. Talia Shire dies oh, no. between Rocky Five and Rocky Six, so Talia Shire is not in the last. Is, is not in Rocky Balboa. Okay, but Polly is. Polly is. So you've gotten two. All right. This one is tricky. Yeah. I can give you the answer if you would like. Who has been in all like the movies? In all six of the movies. Yeah. Not including the creeds. Because I would love to grab a lot of the characters from at least the first two movies and bring them back in the hood. I don't think they continued in any of the okay. movies. Like okay. There are two characters. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the four characters. Um... There is no way you would have gotten the third one. All right. But I was hoping that you would get the fourth one because the fourth one is my favorite character in the entire Rocky franchise. So the four characters that appear in all six of the original Rocky films are Rocky Balboa, Polly, fucking Polly, announcer Stu Nahan. Oh, playing okay. himself. He announces Rocky Bouts in the first six films. He did them before he died. So, boom, that counts. And Apollo's manager, Tony Duke Evers. He is my favorite character in the Rocky franchise. Is Paul is uh, Apollo Creed's manager because he's in all of these movies. He he really starts to appear in the third one, and then in the fourth one, yeah. he's, he's got that powerful monologue that he does in the cabin with Rocky, where it's like, I, I treated him like my son, and now you have to be, like avenge my son. Basically, is what he's saying. But uh, okay, um. He was a legit boxer. The actor who played yeah. him, his name was Tony Burton. He was a professional boxer, and then he did three years in Chino for a robbery. But when he got out, he took acting classes. He was in The Shining, The Toy, Twin Peaks, and fucking Hook. Really nice. Yeah. So, okay, so he was in The Shining. He he was the guy who ran the garage. He has only two scenes in the entire film. But, so he's only on set for a week. But here's another thing about uh, actor Tony Burton, who played the character of Tony Duke Evers, Apollo's manager, in Rocky. He was also a gifted chess player. Okay. And so he's on the set for just one week. He does his scenes, and, and he's like, oh, hey, Mr. Kubrick, I see you have a chess board there. Do you play? Oh, I play, too. Would you like to play a game? And so uh, uh, Stanley Kubrick, being Stanley Kubrick, he stops the movie so he can play chess. And the first game, Tony fucking beats him. And that blows Kubrick's mind. Because he considers himself one of the best chess players in the world because he's fucking Stanley Kubrick. And he hardly ever gets beaten. 
So he's like, who the fuck is this Tony Burton that only has two scenes in the movie? So uh, on the last day on set, uh, Tony Burton is there and says, oh, hey, uh, how you doing, Mr. Kubrick? And Mr. Kubrick says, good, I've got the board set up. We're playing again. <laughs> and so they play again, and Tony beats him again. So here's the crazy ass thing. He only acted in the movie for one week, but he was paid for six weeks so he could stay on set and play chess with Stanley fucking Kubrick. So he was paid, he was paid yeah. one week for acting and five weeks for chess playing. And the reason why I bring this up is, oh, they're here in Russia. They're spending the first night in Russia. Oh, Rocky's putting up photos on his window, photos of his kid, photos of Apollo, photos of yo Adrian. And here's Paulie, and he's by the fireplace, and he's listening to the chipmunks on his Walkman. But what is Tony doing? He's playing chess with a Russian, and he beats him! <laughs> so it made sense, the, uh, the, the chess story. But isn't that crazy? So in the film, they made him play chess because of The Shining. So, well, it... When you learn this one fact that I'm about to tell you about this movie, it will ruin it for, for the rest of your life. So, here you go. We fight in Russia, or we fight nowhere. Who be clear, we will be fighting in Russia, not Wyoming. <laughs> All you will see are Russian signs and snow. So it's definitely Soviet Russia, and not Jackson Hole, Wyoming in December. No, it is America. So, I am happy, though, that the director's cut kept my, uh, my, my second favorite montage of all time. Oh, man. My best friend's dead. M my, uh, manager's dead. And I'm gonna fight this guy, and I might die. I need to Go driving. Driving montage! It's my favorite montage. It's my second favorite montage. Of course, the best montage is a slow motion running on the beach to Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. And then the second best montage is uh, I'm driving and, and wrestling with my own thoughts montage. Uh, so I like that. There's no easy way out. Except an 80s montage. And then, okay, so he goes off and he does it. He drives and he has the driving montage. Okay. Then uh, uh, he travel. He, he has a small conversation with his wife and then he gets in a car and he travels to Russia. Now it's time for a traveling to Russia montage. In the burning hearts in Russia and definitely not Jackson or Wisconsin. <laughs> so he, he has the going to Russia montage. They get to the cabin. Hello, I am Russian. Pleased to meet you. I am Snidely Whiplash. We are all Snidely Whiplash here. Russian Snidely Whiplash. Anywho, you go into cabin now and, and train. Boom! Training montage. And then yes. when he's done training, uh, Adrian arrives in a very short scene. Rocky, I'm with you no matter what. I traveled here to what is clearly Russia and not Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And then what happens after Adrian shows up? Another training montage! Yes. That is four nearly back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back montages! Yes. In like one at 25 minutes, there's four montages. That is fucking insane. Also, if you have a burning heart, you should just get Rylasek OT. Well, of course, not a sponsor. In, mixed in, we see uh, Drago's camp 
and all the high tech gear and all that kind of shit. You know, yeah. what's going on there and Rocky's heaving wood. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he's looking his trees whole training. around. Yeah. But anyway, I think this is the best worst Rocky. Yeah. It's the best worst Rocky. And next episode, which is in two weeks, because we'll be performing at Pride yeah. next week, Sunday, June 25th, I will be performing at Pride. They released the schedule late last night, and it... it it really put things into perspective to see your name there as performing under main stage. And then on Friday, it's uh, Pride starts late. And so there's a bunch of musical acts late at night on the main stage and on the secondary stage. And then on Saturday, it's just all day. There's some things on the main stage. There's some bands in the primary stage. And then late at night, there's a bunch of bands on the main stage and some main time performers. But on Sunday, there's a parade. After that, there are three performances, and then they close it. So those three performances, one of them is always a huge, massive drag show with a ton of drag queens, and people come from forever. This is one of the main shows of the entire Pride Fest in Oklahoma City. And then the first performance is a performance, an hour-long performance by the Oklahoma City Ballet Company. Yeah. So between a performance by the Oklahoma Ballet Company and the biggest drag show in all of the Midwest is fucking me. <laughs> and they completely shut down the secondary stage, so it will just be me performing. Yeah. And I'm... I'm Totally okay with that and not just losing my shit, so everything's fine. You're going to be great. I know, I'm just nervous. Uh, can I close the podcast in exactly one minute? Let's find out. So, that is it. That's next week. We continue with Rocky Five, the worst fucking Rocky movie. But now that I'm looking back at this week, oh, the highs and the lows, uh, the statue, uh, yachts. Uh, who are you to doubt El Dandy? I gotta say, I think this has been a good episode of the podcast. It's been a good episode. Okay, good. I felt the same way, but yes, I, I concur with your assessment. Good, sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Maylin, and I'm on a time crunch, and I just want to say thanks for listening. On behalf of the whole family, I want to say thanks for listening, and, and we will see you next week. You godless heathens! And you douche waffles. We've got about 20 seconds. And you douche waffles and poopy toots. <laughs> okay, and then Maxwell comes in, says something silly. And you.